and welcome to the first game of the final of the 2014 Cardiff Regionals brought to you by netrunners.co.uk on your left hand side you will see Tim from Birmingham playing Andromeda and on your right hand side our very own Dave Hoyland playing HB Engineer in the future uh, you can also probably see there that Tim is using all of his very exciting new loot that he gained from the Regionals tournament so a lovely acrylic Andy as well as the Pawn Pawn player medal. Do very careful to try and pronounce that with a W as much as I possibly can anyway. Uh, so here we are then. Like I say, this is obviously a repeat um, of two games prior uh, that we've seen casted um, due to the way the Corp and Runner mix-up uh, happen in the double elimination system. It is in fact an exact repeat. So we do have Tim once more playing his runner and Dave once more playing his corporation. Um, he hasn't had a lot of luck here and again they have a mention in the previous casts um, we also had uh, this played during Swiss rounds as well, the same matchup, uh, and it very much happened in the same fashion. Uh, again, do have a look on our website. We're going to bring you a tournament report here from Dave Hoyland as well. Um, hopefully it should be uh, up by the end of the day, if not tomorrow. Uh, but do have a look. It'll, again, go through his tournament experience as well as the looking at the new cards for On in Profit and so forth. So we're going to start off by installing an asset. Or an upgrade, who knows. And uh, double icing HQ and R&D. We'll pass the turn, gaining his credit for engineering the future. And again, just to reiterate that the point, and we're at this point, and they, they've played six rounds of Swiss and four or five games uh, in uh, the top eight rounds as well. So these guys are <laughs> absolutely exhausted. Uh, he's going to double sure gamble to start with, which is uh, always nice to see. A lot of burst economy there. Uh, he's going to play Dave Sucker for one, and for his final click. Uh, he's going to have a look and see what else to go for. Looks like he's going to dirty laundry archives. At which point we'll pass the turn. <laughs> so he gets his data sucker token. No desperado of yet, so not the uh, most amazing value in the world. And so no security testing yet, which has been a key and a crucial card. Uh, Dave will res an Eve campaign for five, gaining two back immediately and then take his mandatory draw. There's also quite a crowd assembled around this table, so hopefully you'll get something of the atmospheric flavour of the uh, of the game. It's certainly one that, uh, as you can see from the time frame, is, is a great game and an epic game, and hopefully you'll stick with us guys and watch the whole match, because it gets to be very exciting. He's going to ice up that uh, Eve, as well as in Storn Asset, I think take a credit there. Maybe an Adonis or an Eve. Looks like Tim's drawing up aggressively. He sees the security testing that he probably wanted there initially. And this is the card that single-handedly has caused massive problems for Dave Hoyland's deck. He's also going to play an R&D interface out, so that's fascinating. Uh, he will res the uh, Adonis campaign, I think there by the looks of it. Can't quite make it out from the glare. No, I think it's another Eve campaign. It is indeed another Eve campaign. So that's two of these Eves out on the board now, and certainly going to be taxing to get rid of them. It's going to cost him 10 to clear both off, and it's still kind of important. But uh, with security testing out on the board as well as Data Sucker, he gains a lot of value out of runs on archives or uh, just on servers generally. And uh, I think there was a couple of mistakes made actually in the, the two games prior where we were accessing cards in archives. Uh, despite the fact that he security tested and gained the credits. Again, it's a long day, and you know both these guys are, are somewhat exhausted, unsurprisingly. And uh, a couple of mistakes will have been made. Hopefully there'll be none in this final match, but uh, nevertheless, please do bear with them if they do that. He's going to install a Femme Fatale the hard way. He's going to place it on HQ in Account Siphon. Uh, Dave will not res the ice, I don't think. No, he's not going to. Um, unfortunately, having already used both of the EVE campaigns to res now, he doesn't have any account siphon defence to speak of. So Tim will gain 10 uh, and two tags. He's going to run and uh, hit a wrap around there on uh, the EVE campaign, which is uh, certainly a bit of a problem for him there. And pass the turn. And uh, I'm not sure if he cleared the tags there or not. I don't think he would have had the time. So that he should still be tagged, but I don't think he's put any tag counters out. But I'm pretty sure he's tagged, nevertheless. Ah, there we are. As if by magic. So yeah, two tags. So Dave drawing up uh, relatively aggressively here and looking for a little bit more ice, I would suggest. Probably to set up uh, and secure his his centrals. I have to be careful of that Femme Fatale piece of ice there on uh, HQ now as well. Certainly going to give a huge amount of vulnerability long term. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him trash this. In fact, there we go. 
uh, and replace it with another piece of ice. It was a uh, wall of static, which he <laughs> he was going to turn face down, but having everyone seen it already, it seemed a little bit pointless. And install another piece of ice there on HQ as well. So trying to secure against the account siphons, he can't afford to take another one in the face really at this stage in the game. Um, it would just simply put him back far too long, and uh, it would give him a free reign on R&D and HQ, something that Dave can't really afford to do at this stage. Uh, but still he's tagged. I'm surprised that Dave hasn't taken the opportunity to pick off the security testing, uh, which is a resource. Possibly a misplay, maybe we'll see it in the next round, but he's going to res the quandary. It's always easy to, easy to forget which are resources and which aren't. And uh, he's going to pass the turn, and again, surely here, surely the, the, the correct play would be to trash the, uh, the security testing, and uh, he's going to ice up archives instead. Um, Again, I, I do think popping the security testing here would make a significant uh, impact on the economy for Andromeda. Uh, despite the fact he's sat on over 10 credits, it's uh, that could turn around very quickly. He uh, trashed the Eve there as well, I should mention. So it's still just the one Eve left. He's going to play Yog, which means he can get easy access through there on R&D. Uh, he's going to run R&D and see a Vitruvius, which is a little bit unfortunate there. We'll run again and see a Viper. And uh, run again, see an NAPD contract. Um, I'm not quite sure. Oh, sorry, of course he had the R&D interface. Sorry, my apologies. I was looking to see where he's getting the multiple accesses from, and of course he has the r and I. So he's seen an NAPD, and he's seen a Vitruvius taking him to four points now, but he's skint. Um, and then again, this is the point. Got to pop off the security testing, and he's going to draw. And I just think that's a play that he isn't aware of, and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see it in this game. It's just something that's easy to miss, isn't it, really? It's going to stall ice over R&D there. Not going to trash the uh, the quandary, just in, on the off chance. Again, I was looking no Desperado, it's his maximum memory allowance, so it would be tempting to get rid of the Yog and replace it with something else until he sees a Desperado, so it makes sense to leave it on the board. If there was a Desperado out there, I probably would look to trash the quandary. Looking to try and make taxing runs at the very least. He's going to run archives and see an Eli. I think presumably you would have security tested it there. And he's going to decide whether he's going to click click through to gain his two credits and a data sucker token. I don't think he's going to get a bounce. And he'll draw and play a Desperado. So now he does have full value and he's going to pass the turn back over. At which point Dave will get two off Eve campaign. Looks like he's got a couple of Bartic labours there in hand, so he's in a position to be able to fast advance agendas out. He just needs to get the money up and to actually uh, see the agendas at the right time and hopefully not have them being top-decked off the uh, the top. He's going to clear and um, purge virus counters and get rid of all those data suckers, um, you know, thereby strengthening potentially future ice there. Um, I'm not sure what else he may have placed on uh, R&D and HQ, but at the very least he does make that Viper, which we know he has in hand, uh, a little bit stronger. And uh, already actually in a difficult position here, but he's starting to get ahead of steam, starting to get some money up. He's going to trash a piece of ice again. It looks like he's installing a Grim there over HQ, uh, so something that will certainly cause long-term problems, I would imagine, there for Tim. The Femme Fatale just isn't going to cut it, especially now that he has data suckers, doesn't have any data suckers to use, and that could exactly what Dave, probably what Dave had in mind there. Get rid of the data sucker tokens, enable him to secure HQ with the Grim. And uh, again, it's a great time to pop up security testing, but it just seems to be a play that's been missed. Uh, he will security test. Um, I'm not sure what he is security testing there. But he's trashed the Eve campaign and taken money, I believe. So that's the Eve gone at the very least. Either that or exhausted, I'm not sure which hap what happened there in terms of the quarter the runner move, but say uh, he's going to ice up R&D. He's got to protect against the uh, R&D I at the very least. He's going to install another asset into there. There's still no, uh, still no Corroda, so again, that, that he must have exhausted. Um, he's going to uh, security test something. I'm not sure what yet. It makes it difficult, unfortunately, to see what he is security testing. I'm one of these people also that can't listen to audio while speaking at the same time. It just makes it absolutely impossible. And uh, I'm afraid I can't do two things at once, so uh, you'll have to forgive me. 
So he's going to draw progressively and at that point uh, pass the turnover and Dave will take the opportunity to res the Eve campaign and take two from it. Still no Corroda though. Looks like he's ditched a, a couple of emergency shutdowns, a Plus Creed, a, a K for Jones. All of which is quite surprising. And I guess when he's got tags out though it's probably not surprising to get rid of the KT. Unless he clears the tags it's not really the card you want to play. That security testing is the only means he has currently of generating economy beyond successful runs with Desperado and Data Sucker, which is challenging for him at the moment with that Eli and Archives. And without any uh, Corroda to speak of, he's going to install another asset, gaining a credit for engineering the future. <laughs> and pass the turn, at which point Tim will draw. And uh, again, I would imagine here looking desperately for a special order um, or a, uh, a corroder itself. He's going to run that remote and uh, he will tr uh, trigger the Jackson. And put three back in. Not quite sure, looks like Eve campaign's going back in, as well as the Wall of Static. Um, so going back for economy. So uh, again, having exhausted those two Eve campaigns, two of them are back in, and hopefully providing him some stable trip economy at the very least. There. Again, I think Dave may have misplayed there. I think he may have uh, cracked Jackson before he had to. Um, looks like that was the security target, a uh, security testing target, and uh, so he wouldn't have been able to access that card initially. But uh, it looks like Dave prematurely uses Jackson Howard there, so he didn't have to use the click, which is a shame. He's going to play double Data Sucker. So once again, he's uh, oh, not quite at memory limit, sorry, I do apologise. Uh, one, two, three, four. So he's got one, mem one more memory left with the Desperado out on the board. I could have sworn he was at memory limit pre previously, but apparently I'm wrong. And he's got an inside job. Um, his archives. Seeing the quandary, so uh, a gamble, but at the very least he gets a Desperado and two Data Sucker tokens out of it, and then pass the turn, Dave will do his mandatory draw. Surprised to see him use his, uh, his uh, inside job there, that was probably better way to better save for later. He's going to Bartic Labour out of Gillahans, um, I guess again just to secure his economy more than anything else here at this stage. Long term, I mean, Gillahans is fantastic in HB, install uh, a card and then Kilo hands for, for for three is so so strong. Four and a ten plus a card installed is uh, a great way of gaining a lot of tempo in HB. And I, I've grown to love Kilo hands in HB. Uh, I think it's an absolute superlative card and a great deck building choice. Uh, so we're going to see. I think as an alias, I can never quite remember which one's which. I know Passport's the code gate breaker. I'm assuming that's the barrier breaker one. Uh, I can't remember which one it's called, but uh, that one, the barrier breaker, centrals only. Um, so it's not going to do. It's, it's going it's to be able to get through the Eli, but not particularly effectively. I think it costs a little bit more than a Corroda. Uh, I wouldn't be able to know that looking at the card exactly. But it looks like he's running here on R and D uh, rather than anything else. So uh, we'll see what uh, what joy he gets. Looks like he's, in, he's just baiting away with the res. I don't think he's going to. He is. He's going to res the Eli on top. And uh, without a barrier break, he's going to have to either click through or uh, or skip. He's going to click through and see a Grim. And uh, I think he's just going to lower the strength here by two. And then he's going to have to pay another two, three credits to get through the Grim. At which point you'll see two cards and not see an agenda. So that was an expensive turn for him. Both data sucker tokens gone. A lot of money gone. He's in a real... Economic uh, economic pit here. Gets the data suckers back, of course. But that grim is going to cause him long-term problems, even with the femme fatale on the board. And again, obviously, there's no no ice to bypass there. And that Eli's wide without seeing his barrier breakers. So he does have the uh, the barrier breakers. I'm not sure if he click through it or use the barrier breaker itself. It's going to install an upgrade there into uh, that remote server. And I think he's going to get a hands and pass the term. So it's fairly even, even though he's f uh, four points to one. It's you know Dave's in a very solid position here. Um, there's you know no denying that he's got uh, the opportunities here to uh, 
be able to start scoring agendas out. You know, he's got the Eve campaign raised. Uh, Tim doesn't have the opportunity here to get a lot of economy on the board. He's only got his security testing, uh, which again, as we've mentioned, Dave could probably trash here and really cripple him. But uh, without a Katie Jones or daily casts, uh, without much burst economy to speak of, uh, Tim's definitely stalling here. Uh, he's just going to take some money by the looks of it and pass the turn, at which point Dave will to his mandatory draw and take two off Eve campaign. So it's a good chance here for Dave to stabilise his board position, score potentially another, three, another two pointer, or score a two pointer, and uh, who knows, maybe he'll be able to uh, claw his way back into this one. He's got some great ice on his centrals, at the very least, even if the quandary's not doing very much. And he is going to go and get a biotic out, a, uh, a uh, Vitruvius, taking him to three points, and costing him seven credits. So, well, costing seven, gaining one. So it's three points to four, and it's much, much closer now. And again, he's locked down pretty hard out of the central servers. Um, you really don't want to have to break that Eli to get into archives. It's not profitable to use security testing on anyway. So uh, I'd be surprised to see him do that in any great shape or form. He will get the value out of the data suckers at the very least. And let's not forget he's getting three credits. He's going to run HQ. Um, Dave choosing not to res that Grim. I don't think he's got them quite got the money for it either. Difficult to make out with the, uh, the dice, unfortunately. So he will run an access and seeing uh, uh, which is one card, I believe. I don't think he's using a legwork here. I'm not sure what that was. Oh, so it's a Botic Labour. So it looks like he's seen all three in hand there early on, um, which is good. Assuming he's got something like a Reclamation in order to bring them all back, uh, which I know he does have in his deck as well as a couple of archive memories, I believe. Just looking to keep spitting out uh, San Sans and Botics as best he can. He is going to legwork and see all three, and in fact there is a... Uh, another, he's obviously seen the Biotic as well as the archive memories, so he can bring back another Biotic at any point he wishes. And again, he's gaining great tempo here with the Eve campaign, the Gillahans. He's able to get a lot of economy, but double data suckers causing long-term problems here. Uh, six data sucker tokens now, he can get through Grimm's quite comfortably. And he is breaking something, running here again, I'm not sure where. I think he may be going through an R&D. I believe so, it must be, because there's some complicated maths going on here. So I'm assuming he's going through, and yet breaking, accessing two. Uh, seeing any PD, which he can afford, because he's always got his magic number four. And taking him to six points at the match point. Gaining a couple of data suckers back, so uh, R&D still not secure. He knows there's no agendas in a, in HQ now, having used his legwork. He knows he can afford to attack R&D because there's no other good targets at this stage. Uh, there's no sand sands in hand. Um, R&D is certainly the server here to attack. He's making the right decisions. There's no doubt about that. And uh, it's just a question of how often he can actually do it. He's going to purge virus counters and pass the turn, I believe which point Tim will draw. So, okay, yeah, again, surprising, I'm not going to lie, it's uh, he's in an economic hole and he's not hasn't seen any more economy at all really, he's surviving purely by uh, security testing and by, uh, by Desperado, but the security testing is doing diddly squad anyway because he can't actually get into a server, so he's having to just click for credits now. Um, and Dave can wait because he's got an EVA campaign on the board still taking him back up to I think 7 credits there I want to do his mandatory draw and he can break the R&D log, he's going to hedge fund which is perfect timing uh, I just kind of want to see a little bit more ice here I would suggest just lock down R&D that little bit more Uh, we know that, so uh, I'm almost certain that uh, there's a Grim there on top of HQ waiting for him. Um, so he's going to run, I think he security tested HQ, and uh, Dave electing not to res any ice. I can only assume. He's going to account siphon now at this stage, trying to get back out of the economic hole. And uh, Dave choosing here whether he is going to res ice on HQ. He's going to res the Grim for 5, giving him another bad pub to play with. 
Uh, this is a good time to use it because he's going to have to literally spend all his money. He's going to have to spend all of it to break, uh, get through the get through the grim, as well as his data sucker tokens. So absolutely killing the value there. Don't forget he's got a bad pub from the previous one. Um, and he's going to, I think, bounce out at that point and pass the turn. And I didn't want to lose. I'm guessing the Fem probably would have gone at that point. Still no, uh, no Corroda, so he's relying on uh, on Breach to do the work. And uh, Breach doesn't do great work, <laughs> I have to say. Two credits to break three barrier subroutines and two credits to get a plus four strength. I mean, it costs four to get to break, beat uh, an Eli, I suppose, so it's not costing him any more. Or any less, but it's certainly costing him a fair few bob to get through the, uh, costing him more money to get through the uh, the wraparound, which he hasn't elected to do at any stage. I guess it's all right. Um, he can't obviously can't get through the wraparound because it's centrals only. I do apologise. So that wraparound's still doing good work. You just cannot beat the value of Corroda two cycles and two deluxe expansions on, Corroda is still the mainstay. In fact, you know, just look at how many core cards are out on the board really, other than obviously on Dave's side not so much, but uh, on the runner side, Andromeda, uh, Count Siphons, Desperado, Yogg, Data Suckers, Femme Fatale, all core cards, core cards, and uh, yeah, still such a strong archetype. Very little has changed in the most recent cycle. Honor and Profit has done some, but not a huge amount. So it looks like he's just taking money again and passing the turn. Dave here in a great position to score. He's only on four credits. There's not a lot he can do here to again, again get back out of that economic hole. And even though he's on six points, he's going to find it difficult. And that's, I think, a great play there. So he's putting more ice over R&D. And just looking to stop the top decking of the winning agenda. And holding on by his uh, the skin of his teeth just got to hold on enough to score another two points and suddenly it's anyone's game and even with the full rig he's finding it difficult to get through this glacier type setup it's going to uh, archive memories back about it labor I think there and pass the turn so again he can he's got two Baltics in hand we know which means that he's got enough Baltics to win the match, assuming he doesn't see another Gillahans, which he probably won't want to see. Uh, he's going to run Archives and, and hit a wraparound, <laughs> so it's going to cost him two to get through the wraparound and four to get through the Eli, or he can use clicks. Either way, it's too much money, so if he's security tested Archives, he's not going to make any profit out of that at all. He'll get the two and the, then obviously the one. So I think he is going to uh, go through and break it. So he's going to use. Oh, he's got the two bad pub. I keep forgetting. He hasn't put it on the board, so I have to keep reminding myself. So use the two bad pub to break through the uh, the wrap around, and I think he's just going to click, click through the uh, the Eli, uh, pass the turnover. At which point, Dave will res the Eve campaign once more. Eve campaign number four, I believe, for those of you keeping count. Having Jackson two back in earlier. So it's just again a case of not rushing here, not uh, doing anything too foolish. He knows he has to protect R&D at this stage in the game. Cannot afford to let him into R&D and top deck the winning agenda. Just needs to wait, get access to the cards in hand, and uh, take his time. It looks like he's going to do the same thing again there. He's going to uh, break through the... Uh, he's going to security testing archives before running on... R and D, he'll see the wrapper uh, so there, see the wall of static, I apologize. Um so he's gonna use his data suckers and breach to get through the the uh both pieces of ice there, both barriers, before going on to the Grim. It's gonna cost him a lot of data suckers to get through this server, but he will see two cards. No joy. So it costs him a lot, he gets a lot back, and those double data suckers doing great work there undeniably and uh, gaining a lot of value back out of the bad pub and the, the desperado the, the double bad pub here is certainly hurting Dave in the long term and uh, it's definitely causing problems without that bad pub suddenly he wouldn't be able to be in a financial position to make any money from the security testing which again just to reiterate could be trash still at this stage 
Tim still floating tags. Um, I'm just gaining two data suckers and a, a Desperado. It's good value. It's not necessarily the best value if you're spending three or four to get in there. Um, he's debating whether to trash the Quandary here. I think he's going to leave the Quandary on. He's not short on money. He's uh, He just wants to, I think, kind of ensure there that he doesn't consider trashing the Yog. And uh, wants to... Uh, Leave it on there. Make sure it's uh, keep, to keep him honest, so to speak. To keep him honest. So he's going to run our HQ first click, I believe. Uh, he's going to use two data sucker tokens to get through to Grim and pay them to get through the uh, the Fem, which is perfect because he'll res the Viper on HQ, and uh, the traces will go off. He's got no means of breaking it because he's run out of data sucker tokens. So uh, it's all about the traces. Not sure whether Dave here elects to bump the first trace, but I'm almost certain here he'll probably end his run. And I'd be surprised to see Tim dump any money into these traces at all, having seen hardly any economy cards in this midpoint of the match. Oh, for a Katie Jones at this stage, and uh, again I was surprised to see him ditch it. Uh, I'd be tempted to, to clear tags and and uh, operate with the Katie Jones and keep regurgitating all that lovely, lovely Katie money. Um, but he's, he's floating tag still. And uh, it's certainly causing problems. It's amazing how, cr how many criminals will float tag still in this day and age. And again, it's whether you've got the speed or the time to uh, to be able to not. I don't believe Dave running a huge amount of tag punishment in his deck, so uh, it's not going to come as a great concern. <laughs> But he will take his money off his Eve campaign at the very least. And then do a manager draw. So Tim getting no easy accesses. Even with a full break of sweet arrow, he's gonna hedge fund first click. And I think he's just gonna take money off uh off Hillahans, however you want to pronounce it. No easy way for him to get data sucker tokens, and certainly no easy server for him to uh get his security testing credits. Uh, he's going to spend more when he gets, even with the two bad pub on the board. Which isn't actually on the board, but we, we know we're there, still irrespectively. So I think he's going to do the same thing again and go through on uh, on archives. I don't think he's going through on HQ. Well, he can't really. He has no means to break the Viper without data sucker tokens, so uh, looks like he's, he's using archives as a means to get a little bit of cash but not a huge amount. He's just about getting a profit with data sucker tokens, but the sucker tokens are probably more important at this stage, uh, particularly with Grimm's and uh, with a Viper on the board. <laughs> doesn't have any means of uh, breaking them otherwise. The Femme Fatale doesn't really break Grimm efficiently at all uh, without data sucker tokens. Two to bump strength is not inconsiderable when you're paying six for strength and then one to break. Seven credits to the Breaker Grim, not particularly profitable, even with that bad pub that you gain from it. But two bad pub per run here is uh, certainly fueling his economy and enabling him to make runs on these central servers still. And still one piece of unrest ice there on R&D. It's just got to lock down that top deck agenda. And Dave's still doing very well here to maintain his, maintain his ball position against the dominant criminal position, uh, position undoubtedly. You know, Tim has all the pieces of his puzzle. Even if they are laid out in a somewhat chaotic manner. So there's an upgrade there going into the root of uh, R&D. He's giving some thought as to what he's going to actually put there, whether he is or not. So uh, thinking it's probably going to be an Ash. I know Dave very keen on Ash. I don't think it's a Caprice Nisei. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have any Niseis in the deck. But uh, again, he could be running an Ash. Either way, it's going to cost, um, make it an extra little bit more taxing to get through onto R&D there for Tim. It's got a dirty laundry into, again, what I can only assume is archives, because it's the only server he can actually break into and actually still make a profit. And again, for no other reason than to gain the data sucker tokens back. Use the security testing. With, with the dirty laundry, it's not too bad. And this is the problem with dirty laundry, though. In the mid game, in the late game, it's uh, not necessarily the best card. Um, making successful runs becomes far more problematic than what once was. 
But he's doing quite well economically now, and you kind of hope here to see a close the counts. I don't think Dave's running one, unfortunately, but nevertheless. So I think he may have gone on archives again there. Just to allow him spending the money to get data circuit tokens effectively, which actually save him more money long term. Oh, sorry, I tell a lie he's running through an HQ. Now he's gonna see one card, and it's not the card he needs. Looking for that last agenda. Remember it's not for gaze on six points here. But he will emergency shut down the Grim there on HQ and pass the turn. Whether Dave chooses to uh, re-res that will be an interesting one. And again, Dave can afford to kind of sit back here, even though he's on six points. Uh, he's going to play another piece of ice there on R&D, an absolute tower of a server, so six pieces of ice. And that is not inconsiderable. with an upgrade in the root of the server. That's not the kind of server you particularly want to be making frequent runs on. And he's only got the one R&D eye, so he's hoping here to see the, the top deck agenda before Dave sees it. Um, though Dave's still only on three points, can afford to take it. He's going to run HQ, uh, make him re-res the Grim and take another bad pub, taking three bad pub now. Um, but he will be able to break that Grim of the data sucker tokens. It's going to cost him another data sucker token to break the Viper with Yogg. And uh, you'll be able to access another card. I think, again, they're just deciding on the math of the situation. Again, with uh, two bad pub to use, obviously three next run, um, he's in a very strong economic position without any economy, almost, really. Oh, and it seems he has six cards. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> yeah, that happens. Never mind. <laughs> I guess he's going to have to choose a card to discard now. Probably going to be a TO situation where he just has to ask if uh, if that's all right. Uh, I'm fairly fairly sure we were all watching him discard, and I'm pretty sure it was a quandary. And all of us were in agreement that that would almost certainly be the card he was going to ditch, um, regardless of uh, whether he had a better successful run on HQ or not. Um, you know, it's a very obvious choice for uh, for a discard. Quandry doing absolutely no good here at this stage. Yeah, with so much going on, it's difficult to keep track. He's going to see another wraparound in HQ there. I'm pretty sure Dave doesn't have any agendas, because we know he's got the Bartic Labour. If he had an agenda, he'd score it, surely. Um, I'm surprised to see him running aggressively against HQ here. Um, just for no other reason. Then again, we know he's got the Bartic Labours. He will emergency shut down that Grim again. Um... He's got two Bartic Labours in hand, and if he's, you know, <laughs> if he's got a Genesis, he's going to score them as soon as he sees them. Um, I can understand why he doesn't want to go for against the R&D, but at the same time, it, you know, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out there that he, he doesn't have any agendas in hand, because as soon as he top decks one, you know, there's little doubt in my mind that it's going to be Bartic Labour score. He's on the, in a very secure economic position, especially with the Hiller hands. And oh, lo and behold, there we go, Bartic Labour out in an accelerated base test. Uh, I'm guessing he's probably not going to trigger that at this stage. Uh, it's just not worth the risk. And he'll pass the turn, taking to five points to six. Uh, so we really are at uh, crunch time within this match, and Dave done ver doing very well here to uh, claw his way back into this match, really taking his time, playing a very patient game um, and building up that monster ice server there on R&D with an upgrade in the route. Certainly looks unattractive to run, but it's the only place there are going to be agendas. We know he's got another Bartic Labour in hand. He saw one on HQ and uh, we know he archived memories one back from archives into HQ. Um, I think here he's choosing to, and uh, feeling the pressure, choosing to run R&D. So this is, they really is a Hail Mary, all or nothing run here. Dave pointing out that he's surely not in a financial position to be able to get through with it, with the uh, the upgrade in the route of R&D. Uh, saying, you know, you can get through, but this Ash is going to lock you out. And uh, Dave here choosing whether or not to res this piece of ice. Trying to do the math with six data sucker tokens on the board. 
It's going to res the Roto, so it's only going to cost him two credits to break. And obviously, you can use two of the bad, three bad pub he has to use. So he'll only have one bad pub left to use on this run now. And I think now this is a stage he's not going to res the uh, next piece of ice. Or is he? I think he is. And uh, let's see what it is. Another Roto turret, so it's still not going to keep him out, but it will cost him one credit to break and a bad pub. So that's all his bad pub used now. And now he's at the stage where he has to break through the uh, Wall of Statics, the Eli's and the Grim. And it's going to cost him a fair amount, to say the least. <laughs> And uh, you know, as soon as he gets there, he's going to have the situation of will he be able to get through with that upgrade in the server? And so he's just doing the math on how much it costs to get through and break the Grim. And obviously, it's not going to cost him anything to get through the Quandary, but he's left on two credits. He'll gain one back for a successful run with Desperado, so he will have enough to trash an Ash. <laughs> But uh, he certainly will not have enough to beat the Trace, and it means he's going to be right back to square one. And that's a taxing server to get through, even with three bad pub to use. He is finding that a real challenge. And who could blame him? So he's going to just, before anything else happens, he's going to get a successful run. And uh, I don't think he's going to res that upgrade, which is a surprise. Um, I guess we're about to find out what it is. Oh no, sorry, he's, oh, he's, sorry no, I'll tell a lie, he's going through and doing the math again on uh, on the run, we're just making sure it's absolutely right, and I think both players sensing that this is a key and critical run here, 5 points to 6, you know, a lot rests on it, uh, so that's what he's used, he's got 1 credit left by the looks of it, um, he's not going to rest the upgrade, and... Uh, that's a surprise! <laughs> Nothing else. So he's going to have a look and see what it is, and it's a Sand City Grid. And uh, it was just a, a, a very good bluff there on Dave's part, really making him do the math. He's going to see two cards, and the top card was the ABT that would win the game for Dave the next turn. So absolutely the right play there for him to go in and try and grab that. And uh, Tim comes out as rightfully as the champion uh, of the Cardiff 2014 Regionals. Uh, and Dave getting second place. Both will go on to the Nationals, which we hope to bring you coverage of soon. In the meantime, hopefully we'll have coverage of the Swiss. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you.